Welcome to the video on migration and genetic drift. We're going to start by looking at the basics of migration. Now the definition you need to learn is that it's alleles, the expression of a gene, flowing from one population into another. And the purpose is genetic variation. Now two other terms that are helpful to know for your exams. One is this term immigration and this means going away. So this blue bird here is immigrating away from its population whereas the word immigration with an I means coming in. So this blue bird is immigrating into the population B, the red bird's population. Now looking at these, the factors that influence this migration are barriers. Now these could be pros and cons. So a barrier might get in the way and oftentimes stop something happening. So this could be a big physical barrier like a mountain, or actually when you look at the Great Wall of China, some plant species on one side didn't grow on the other side because they couldn't get over the wall. They just dropped their seeds on the ground. Secondly, mobility. So birds can fly over a barrier like this, but plants can't, unless by chance they have pollen that gets caught in the wind and can. And finally, choice. So if somebody wants more choice, say a bird is unhappy with the males that are there, a female bird, and wants to go somewhere else to have increased genetic variation and better choice of males, they'll go searching for it. So these things can influence migration. Now let's look at genetic drift. Genetic drift is all about random chance and random sampling. So for example, randomly you might have a father and son that look dissimilar, they don't look the same that much. Or randomly you might have a mother and daughter that do look the same. Now you could have two sisters that look completely different or completely the same and I'm sure you know examples of this. This is due just to random sampling and chance. And that is what genetic drift talks about. It talks about the change in alleles, how often these alleles come up due to random sampling and chance. So if you understand that chance can affect how often certain things come up, let's look at how this affects small populations. So if you have a small population, say for example you only have 32 in your population, shown here by 32 marbles, and you might have two different alleles. So you might have a red expression and a blue expression. Now just by genetic drift, because of random sampling and chance, you might have more blue expressed the next generation, just by coincidence. Then by chance again, you might have more blue on the next time, and you've now only got three reds left. Now by chance, you might have a few more reds this time, and then by chance again, all the reds might go, and they all might be blue. All of a sudden, you've ended up with absolutely no red alleles expressed in your population. They're completely bred out. So as you go from generation to generation, this genetic drift can cause certain alleles to take over or just change, and the whole population changes as a result of chance. Now in this case, there's only a one in a million chance that this will actually happen if you have a population of 32, which isn't that big. But if you had a population of four, say a much smaller sample size, now the chances are just one in 16 that the blue will completely take over. So when you're talking a small population, the effect of genetic drift can be really, really large. A small population, you only need to change two marbles for your whole population to have completely lost this red allele. And of course, as you get bigger and bigger populations, two marbles have a much, much smaller effect overall. Now this can work with migration as well as genetic drift, because if these two marbles happen to leave a population, they fly away for some reason, then again, you're going to completely have lost that allele from the population. So here's what you need to know. You need to know that migration is alleles flowing from one population into another and the purpose is genetic variation. That can be caused and stopped by barriers, so often physical barriers can get in the way, by the mobility, so more mobile things will get more interdispersed and there'll be more migration. People are very mobile, we immigrate and migrate all the time, and by choice. People want to go to other places, animals want to go to other places and choose other mates. And we know genetic drift is the change in how often alleles get shown just due to random sampling and chance. Now remember, small populations are much more likely to change. Even if you didn't completely understand the marble example, you need to know that they are more likely to change, so at the very least, you can say this in your exam. And this is genetic drift. And remember, if you have a large population, it's much less likely to have a big significant change going from say half and half to all one allele, than it is if you have a small population. And that works both for migration, if you have one bird here leaving out of five, you've just lost 20% of your alleles. Whereas if you have one bird leaving out of a thousand, you've lost 0.1% of your alleles. 
So let's look at a question now. Small populations are much more prone to changes in the gene pool because of genetic drift and migration. So we're going to discuss this in a statement and we're going to include the key terms over here. We're going to talk about why the gene pool changes over time and we're going to compare and contrast how the gene pool changes in a small population compared to a large one. First, let's look at definitions. The gene pool we know is a complete set of all the alleles in a population. Genetic drift is the change in how often alleles occur in a population. Again, this is due to random sampling and chance. And migration, this is the transfer of alleles or of genes from one population into another. And that purpose is genetic variation. So let's look at now why this gene pool changes over time. So looking at these populations, we have a gene pool here. And there is changes in how often these alleles occur due to random chance, which is genetic drift, and due to migration, so things coming and going. Now, so we don't get confused with natural selection, which we'll talk about in a future video, this isn't related to how fit or suitable these populations are to their environment. Completely, we want to talk about genetic drift and migration here. So the gene pool changes in allele frequencies, and this is because new alleles come into a population that's if somebody immigrates or can be lost from the population due to immigration. You could also add that alleles may be lost due to genetic drift. Now the second part, let's compare and contrast a changes in a small population with a large population. So we can see the effects of both genetic drift and migration are particularly apparent in a small population, where one small change can have a really big impact on the ratio of those alleles. So that's like, for example, one red bird here leaving changes 20% of the whole allele base of this population. So small population, big change. And that is migration and genetic drift.